Hey guys, I'm Nick, aka The Roy Nick's Games, and this is a intro to OBS, a complete breakdown introduction to open broadcaster software. After you watch this video, you should be pretty confident in using open broadcaster software. At least that's my hope, right? That's my plan. If you do have any questions after you've watched this entire video, please let me know those in the comment section down below. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and jump on into it. So when you first open OBS, it's going to look exactly like this, except your scenes will be blank and your sources will be blank. First off, we need to create a scene. And what a scene is, is it is a basically folder that holds sources. What sources are, are the things that show up on your screen. So for example, you know, your, your gameplay or your overlay or your webcam or whatever you have showing up on your screen. That is what a source is. A scene is just something to hold those sources. And you can create multiple scenes for different things. For example, I have one scene for Minecraft recording and a different one for other recording. And then a different one for tutorials. I have scenes for pretty much everything and I should have one for console gaming. And I'm going to add that later today. But nevertheless, that is, uh, that's pretty much how scenes work. You, these are folders that hold sources. Now how do you create a scene? It's simple. Right click in this white space and then add scene. For this one, we're going to simply post example. You can name this whatever, it doesn't matter. And then in your sources, you want to add whatever you decide to add. If it's a video game, you'll add a game capture. If it's a webcam, you'll you'll add a video capture device. If you want to just capture a window, you do window capture. If you want to capture what's on a monitor you have, monitor capture. If you want to add an image such as an overlay, an image. If you want to add an image slideshow, like multiple images showing up at one after another, add an image slideshow, and then last but not least, text on the screen is exactly that, text on the screen. Even scrolling text uh, on the screen is what you will add that with. Nevertheless, for the sake of this tutorial, we are simply going to do a window or a monitor capture, and we're going to just name this Monitor 2. So, go ahead and click OK. And then now, as you can see, it says monitor 1 up here, but we don't want to capture that. We want to capture monitor 2. So once we've done that, we can click OK. And then it's going to say error was enabled, all that. That's fine. The only reason it's saying that for me is because I'm exporting a video, recording a video, and all of that stuff. It's, it's quite insane. But nevertheless, click OK. That shouldn't pop up for you. If it does, that means your PC is, is lower specs and it's probably not going to be able to play this. For me, as you can see down here, I'm, I'm really using my PC right now. Um, nevertheless, um, I, I, once you've added the sources you want, say you wanted to add the monitor, and we'll add an image as well. So add image, and we'll just leave that the same. We'll add one of my Minecraft overlays. So if we go into here, we go into Photoshop work, Minecraft overlays, Minecraft overlay, and then click OK. Now, if you want to see what's in your sources, what you have added that will show up on the screen, simply click Preview Stream. And then, boom, the epic, like, endless thing of, of recording shows up for me here. For you, it won't be that. It'll be whatever you decided to put on your screen. Now, I do want to show something real quick. If we can, You can click these boxes, by the way. These check boxes make things appear and disappear on the screen. And I just want to show you guys this image. Now, if you can see this image, it's not full screen. It's not 1080p, right? It's 720p. And I don't like that. We need to fix that. So how do we fix that? Well, it's really simple. You can right click down here and then just simply position size and then fit to screen. Or if you wanted to say add a webcam in here, for example, if we add monitor 2 back here in a second, you can click edit scene and then add monitor 2 back and then click on monitor 2 and then there's a red box all the way around monitor 2. I don't know if you can see it, but it's there. There's a red box all the way around it. You can drag that now, that red box, all the way down and position it right where a webcam would be. So now monitor 2 is a webcam uh, for this video rather than the actual video. So that is how you can scale down things, add in webcams, things of that nature. Simply by clicking edit scene and then dragging what you want to drag or moving or doing all that stuff. But whenever you're done with that, you can click edit scene again and now red boxes disappear and you can't drag this stuff so you don't have to worry about accidentally dragging like an overlay during your stream, which is not good. You don't want to do that. But once you've got all this worked out, pretty much that's it. Adding sources and, and, and scenes is very, very simple in um, OBS. It's, it's, it's extremely easy, actually. It's literally just uh, right, it's click and, click and choose, pick and choose, really. And uh, as far as moving stuff, it's just drag and drop and all of that stuff. So it's really, really easy. 
But what if we want to, you know, say record locally rather than stream to Twitch? Or what if we want to stream to Twitch rather than record locally? I'm going to show you guys how to set up your profiles up here at the top. So you do have to click stop streaming or stop preview, right? Before you can uh, move on to doing this. But after you've done that, simply go up here to settings. So settings, settings. And then you'll see profile, general, setting profile. What is all of this? Well, what profiles are, are different options you have for recording or streaming. For example, I have one for recording, and I have one for streaming. I have one for each of these because I do both of them. And rather than having to go in and change my recording to streaming every time, going on here, broadcast settings, and then going to live stream, going to Twitch, doing all that, rather than doing that, I can simply just hit Twitch settings, and then if we go to broadcast, look at that, Twitch already ready to go. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and work on local recording first because that's a lot easier and then we'll move over to twitch.tv and uh, look at my settings for that. So recording locally, I do have a really, really, really good computer, so I do record at a 15,000 bit rate locally. I would not recommend that for most people. Um, if you have an average computer or uh, not even a dedicated graphics card, I would recommend probably about a 5,000 bit rate. That's still going to give you 1080p quality, just not extremely, extremely good quality at 360p too, which is what higher bit rates do. Higher bit rates allow for higher quality as you move down in quality, if that makes sense. And uh, more fuzziness at 360p. Your fuzziness will still be close to none at 1080p, but it'll be harder to watch at lower difficulties. At, or at lower, um, lower, you know, odd video setting players. And like 360p, 480p will be lower quality and it'll be a more fuzzy than at 1080p, which is uh, less likely at a 15,000 bit rate, which is what I typically record at. Your file sizes will also be a lot larger at 15,000 bit rate rather than 5,000. I'd recommend 5,000 for most people, but if you do have a really, really good graphics card, uh, you can go ahead and do 15,000. Nevertheless, all of those settings, these should be, you know, how they are set normally, which is H.264, X.264, and then um, UCBR, enable CBR padding. Audio settings, AAC is what I recommend with uh, max kilohertz. That's what my mic is, is 48. If you have a 44 kilohertz mic, you want to use that, obviously, but mine's that. Stereo, because I do have a stereo mic, and then bitrate 320. I do turn my bitrate all the way up because I think, you know, the higher the bitrate, the better quality audio. So that's why I do that. Moving on to broadcast settings. This is very, very simple for a local output. You just simply say file output only and then click browse, go here, desktop, and then whatever you want to do, right? You could also save this to uh, whatever you want, your, your videos, your documents, whatever, your external hard drive. But I just save it to my desktop and then move it to my external hard drives afterwards. Nevertheless, so there's that and uh, very, very simple. Moving on to video, I do use my uh, my graphics card, my GTX 760, to uh, you know encode the video. That's what this is: video adapters encoding the video. If you do not have that, you can use your Intel HD graphics or your AMD graphics that are integrated. That's completely fine. I would just recommend using uh, your graphics card if you do have one. After that, I do record at 1080p, so 1920 by 1080. However, if you want to record at 720p, you that would be 1280 by 720, which is also HD. And the important thing is make sure it's at least this and that it's 16 by 9. If it's not 16 by 9, it's not going to fit on YouTube correctly or even Twitch.tv for that matter. Nevertheless, I am going to uh, to stick to 1080p. So after that downscale, you want that to be none. You don't want to downscale at all. And I record at 30 FPS. And the reason is because YouTube only allows 30 FPS. If you upload in 60 FPS, it's going to downscale that to 30 FPS anyway. So you might as well go ahead and uh, record in 30 FPS and upload in 30 FPS. That way YouTube doesn't have to process that down. And this will help your processing times. Nevertheless, if we move on to audio... I would just recommend leaving this at default. I've never really had to do much with the uh, audio in OBS. It always picks up whatever is coming out of the computer. So, for example, right now I'm you know watching Philip DeFranco's live stream. If I turn the audio on on that, it would pick it up. That's how it's going to work. So any game that's coming through your speakers is going to pick up. Any Skype coming through your speakers is going to pick that up as well. So I've never had any issues with that. And if you want to play with audio settings, rather than doing it in OBS, what I would recommend doing is actually going up here to the sound option at the very top, the speakers, clicking that and then going to mixer. And this is how you can lower and raise audio sounds and uh, things like that. Uh, so if you want Skype to be louder and your game to be lower, you would lower the game volume but leave the Skype volume at 100%. So that's how I do that whenever I'm you know playing with somebody else. Rather than having to actually go into OBS and do it, I just use the audio mixer on, um, on the computer. 
So after that, going into advanced settings, I don't think I've changed anything here, but you guys can compare. Um, I honestly don't know. I might have enabled use CFR, but I'm not positive. So I think all that is just left the same. Don't do anything there. I've never used that before in my life. And after that, we can go ahead and click OK. And now, if you go up here to Profiles, you have PC Recording or whatever you've named it. So if you come back to here, it's probably going to say like Profile 1 or something. And you can type in whatever you want to rename that. So PC Recording, for example, in my for my case, and then just rename. After that, that is now PC Recording, and you're good to go. So if you just go up to Profiles, PC Recording, and then you can start recording, and it's going to output locally, and you're going to be good to go. After that, let's go ahead and look at Twitch streaming. So Twitch streaming is what most people are going to do with OBS. In my opinion, I think a lot of people download it for that. Some people do download the uh, output locally. That's why I do it for you know recording locally, and that's why I you know did that first. But nevertheless, what you want to do is create a Twitch streaming profile. So just Twitch streaming or whatever you want to call it doesn't really matter. But after that, um, we can go on to encoding now. Encoding this is a lot different for streaming than it is recording locally because when you're streaming this is the rate at which you are uploading so I would recommend not going over you can't actually go over how many upload you have so for example if you have four upload you can't stream at 4,000 kilobits per second because that is exactly how much upload you have it's not going to work. However, if you have 4 upload and you want to stream, for example, I stream at 2500, that's just over half, plus that leaves 1.5 megabytes for in-game and my family and all that because I do share um, a router with them. So that means that I can actually get, you know, I can stream and then play multiplayer games while someone's still watching Netflix and be okay, right? I can be fine doing that and um, it, it's completely fine using that much upload. However, if uh, you have a 1 megabyte per second upload, I would recommend not going over 750 kilobytes per second, which is actually 360p quality. 720p streaming quality is a 1600 bit rate, and 1080p is a 2500 bit rate. Um, anything more than that is just uh, adding in less, you know, fuzziness in your stream. But keep in mind, the higher your bit rate, the harder it is for someone to watch it on Twitch TV. So you want to keep it. I wouldn't recommend going over a 5000 bit rate. However, I do know some streamers personally who stream at a 15,000, and they don't have any issues uh, because people can watch it at non-source quality, meaning they can turn down the quality on Twitch, and they're fine. So, you know, I'm going to stick to my 2,500 with my current 4 megabytes per second upload, but the better upload I get as I move into a bigger city, I will uh, be able to see, you know, actually how much I can push that, and I'll let you guys know. Nevertheless, moving on to broadcast settings. I'm not going to go through all this. I will say that you need to get your Twitch streaming key and choose the server that is closest to you. For me, that's Ashburn, Virginia. For you, that might be Singapore or Stockholm or something like that. But um, for me, that's Ashburn, Virginia. And your streaming key can be found on tw on your Twitch.tv dashboard. I'm not going to go through all of that, how to get your streaming key and all that right now. But if you want to see how to do that, I am going to include a link in the description that will show you exactly how you can get all that. Now, if you'll notice, there is a bunch of red right here. A bunch of it, okay? Come in here and click Optimize, okay? And then there you go. You're good. And what that changed was, if we go back to our chat settings here, it lowered the audio bitrate because Twitch doesn't allow any bitrate higher than that. So um, 160 is fine, and uh, that's where we'll leave it from now on. Nevertheless, moving on to video, I do stream at a 1080p because I'm right at the cusp of 1080p, and so that's going to be 1920 by 1080 and uh, downscale none. If you're streaming at 720p, that is going to again be 1280 by 720 and I honestly do not know 480 and 360p if you're streaming in that, so you're going to have to look that up. But, um, but yeah, so that's kind of how that works. And downscale none, 30 FPS again because... While Twitch partners can stream at 60 FPS, Twitch non-partners can only stream at 30. So if you're not a partner, you can only stream at 30. If you are, maybe try 60. See if it looks good. If it doesn't, you know, maybe just keep it at 30. Also, the higher FPS you stream at, the uh, more your computer is going to be bogged down. So keep that in mind. Moving on to audio. This is going to be the, actually the exact same settings as when we were recording locally using OBS because audio is the same no matter what. So nothing there, you know. Well, yeah, um, after this, all this should be the same because it all should have been changed whenever you hit optimize down there for Twitch.tv. So that should be pretty much be it. I think you do need to turn on use multi-threader optimizations, but other than that, you are good to go. Now you can stream live to Twitch.tv and PC record, record locally 
all at once. I've also broken down what scenes and sources are, how to edit scenes and sources, how to preview your stream. When you are ready to start live streaming or start recording, simply hit start recording. If you're recording locally and if you're streaming, please just hit start streaming. So there you guys have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. Anyway, guys, subscribe. I'm going to do more OBS tutorials as time goes on and as you guys request them. If I didn't cover something in this video that you want to know how to do in OBS, just let me know in the comment section down below. I'll be more than happy to teach you how to do it and do a tutorial on it. Nevertheless, guys, I'm Nix Games. This has been your introduction to OBS. You should now be pretty confident in using this software as you're streaming and recording your videos. Nevertheless, guys, I'm Nix Games again, and I am out. Peace. And here's some videos you guys might want to go check out. On the left is my Adobe Premiere render setting. So you know how to record in OBS, but what you don't know is how to export that after you've edited it in Adobe Premiere. So go check that out. That's my Adobe Premiere export settings. It'll allow you to get amazing 1080p quality using Adobe Premiere. And on the right is Awesome Knots, in which I go and play Awesome Knots as a part of my Indie Game Spotlight series. It's actually a really, really good game. And it's a League of Legends take on a side scroller. So go check it out. Also check out my daily vlogs at the bottom center of your screen to see what I'm doing every single day of my life. Anyway guys, I'm Nick's Games and I'm out. Peace.